I was sitting on a plane, studying film schedule for the upcoming Berlin Film Festival. And right next to me sits a guy around 40, 45 years old. He has good English, he ordered some food from flight attendant. And by the looks of it, he has high income level. At least he has one of those Louis Armani Giorgio Vuitton bags, and a nice watch, and a brand new iPad which he puts on his knees. He gets a tissue out. He spits and starts to clean it. Now, some people might be disgusted, but I'm absolutely delighted, because I know I'll get a story. And a story I did get, because this guy decides to watch a film. Now, I'm not exactly for watching films on a plane. There are two main distractions. But if I were to watch a film on a plane, I would probably watch one of my favorite films that I have seen a dozen of times. Or one of Friends' episodes, which I have seen slightly more than a dozen of times. I would not watch The Revenant. This guy did. <laughs> the Revenant, the film that was shot in ultra-wide aspect ratio to encompass all of the landscape. The film that was shot with natural lights, not artificial lights, to, to give him a really unique visual style. The film that got Oscar for Best Cinematography of the Year. So here is this guy, watching The Revenant on a shaky plane, on an iPad covered with spit. <laughs> and not in crisp high definition, no, in a crappy, illegal DVD screener quality. There's one issue, though. Sun is shining through the plane, so he holds a magazine, so to not to spoil near perfect theatrical experience. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are black bars. Black bars that are preventing him to fully enjoy the film in glorious nine-inch full screen. So he taps twice, he zooms in, he crops half of DiCaprio's face, <laughs> and he makes my film-loving heart bleed. Why? <laughs> because what we are doing, we are trying to create unique cinematic experience for each and every viewer. In four years, we have created more than 200 film events. For new films, for old films, for mainstream films, for classic films, for independent films. So when this guy is watching a visually impeccable film on his... Oh, okay, okay. Let me interrupt you there, thank oh, you. It's happy okay, place. it's cool. Rose We're back. all friends here, right? No need to be angry. <laughs> or is it? Mm. <laughs> I would like to propose a different thing. Let's go back in time. Let's go back a hundred years. When Brothers Lumiere presented their first film to the world. The arrival of the train. It was the first motion picture in the history of the cinema. And that was quite an event. So, obviously, the audience dress up together, come to the screening together, watch the film together, and then they run out screaming together. Because that's how this first screening went. Or we can uh, maybe go back in time of the Great, the Great Depression. Because the D Great Depression saw the biggest spike in attendance to the movie theaters in the United States of America. Why is that? Because even, the, even in the toughest times, people would still bond together by going to the movies and watching and experiencing something great together. At, that, at those times, it was the only entertainment they got. Or we can uh, go back in time when we used to say, let's just go to the movies. Not let's just go to that or that or that particular film, but simply let's just go to the movies and watch whatever they are showing together, of course. Or we can go back to the, my childhood, maybe. Dark times, should we? <laughs> <laughs> Dark but interesting. For example, on the Friday mornings, I used to skip school. 
which is why I did not finish high school, yeah? No regrets there. Uh, <laughs> still skipping school, I went to the Riga's biggest film theater at the time. Many of you recognize it from the picture. I would stand in long, long, long lines together with complete strangers with one common goal. Just to be the first one to see the new, most new, best and biggest film on the big screen together with other people. Films such as Titanic. The Matrix. Independence Day. Lord of the Rings. Batman and Robin. Uh, no, that's okay, yeah. just... Uh... <laughs> let's forget that one and take Time Machine one yeah, more time. Yeah, let's go back in time. <laughs> Uh, still, uh, the idea is that we were waiting for the films together, we were watching them together, we were discussing them together afterwards, and that magical, absolutely magical and beautiful feeling is what got me to love movies in the first place. And that's why I'm doing what am I doing, and this is why I'm here today with you. It was magical, it was great, it was beautiful, but it's rarely like that anymore. No more magic. No more Wingardium Leviosa. <laughs> the first of all, we have lots of ways to see film right now. We, have, we can watch it on a laptop, on your TV, on your phone, on your sparkingly clean iPad. But what we do is we watch films by ourselves. And even if we go to the cinema theater, we do not feel the same level of anticipation while sitting in the dark room. Cinema used to be a shared experience. Where else would 200 strangers sit in awe and collectively, simultaneously, imagine fighting Saruman's army in the Middle Earth? That's not a shared experience. It's, uh, cinema in its purest form is shared dreaming. Except it's not anymore. How the hell did we get here? How did we lose the movie magic? Well, a million dollar question there, right? There are a few reasons, of course. And one and the most obvious one is that nowadays, in the film theaters, we are mostly shown mainstream films. And the more mainstream films get shown in the film theaters, the less non-mainstream or independent films are being shown in the film theaters. The less independent films are being shown in film theaters, the less independent films you see, obviously. It's film business, it's called for that for a reason, and it's supply and demand. But still, it's a vicious, vicious, vicious circle where there are more and more and more films being produced each year, and there will be produced even more. But in reality, there are less and less and less films being shown in film theaters. In fact, if you want to seek out some non-mainstream film or independent film, in a film theater, to see it on a big screen, you will have to seek it out, like we used to seek out the old, old and rare VHS tapes. Only, I guess, uh, in this case, you will not be that successful, unfortunately. Uh, so you will, be, you will be forced to watch the film at home, and you will be robbed of that great, beautiful, and fantastic experience of watching it on the big screen, together with another people. And over the years, we grew accustomed to seeing films that way. Uh, we have this notion that we see the same film. We see the same characters, we hear the same dialogues, and we get the same story, and everything is awesome. But if it is a big spectacle, like a film about a caped crusader who decides for one crazy brief moment that he can beat a guy, that can punch him so hard that he will see the curvature of the earth, then that film we're gonna see on the big screen. But Boyhood? A cinematic, an original, inventive cinematic experiment that was shot for film 12 years straight. Those kind of films we will see at home, right? Could we be more wrong? Well, sometimes I agree with those people. I honestly what? agree, because the theatrical experience itself has also changed from the years past. Unfortunately, not for the best. And one example, if I, for example, hear one more phone call, sometimes going out in the audience, and we can all agree that... 
Surely that, that, that guy is not for you. Don't call me Shirley. Well, pff, I guess we can just uh, give a round of applause to the phone call guy. Yeah, yeah, thank you, man. Great, great job, great job. There is always one phone call guy in every audience. Still, you get the idea. Film experience and film theaters have become much more different. You have eating on the left, not you. Talking to the right, phone calls are going all around you at all the times. And while all those single things are not the deal breakers, let's be honest here, they are not deal breakers, they are bad, alarming, disgusting, but no. But together, combined, they are part of one bigger problem, and that is that we are losing this magic of watching films in the film theater. Because as a film fans, the thing that we want to share is this experience, this magical experience, and not the physical theater or the room. Well, that's like your opinion, man. Because from a business perspective, <laughs> this is not a problem. At least right now it's not. We still go to the cinema theater to see the ever-present blockbusters. But spending there two hours is exactly that, two hours. Instead of food for thought, we are getting food for munching and crunching. Instead of an event that might strike a nerve in viewers' heart, we might get struck by boredom. Because the sad truth is that without the broad spectrum of films, without the shared dreaming, without the paying attention to the film's journey due to distractions, we get to films being just consumer goods. Essentially fast food, and not the royal with cheese kind of fast food, no, regular cheeseburger. We lost the magic. Uh, this elusive, invisible matter which filmmakers work so hard to achieve and to present to us. How can we get it back? Well, that's another million dollar question. Right Two there. millions! Uh, there are a few options how we can get this magic back. Starting with the most obvious one, I would say, the technical one. Because every time when Hollywood gets threatened by some new technological advancement, such as being TVs in the 50s, VHS in the 80s, now there is the streaming, they always come up with some new, shiny, brand new, sparkling technical solution that's supposed to bring people back into theater seats. For example, there is 3D, all right? We all remember 3D. It was supposed to bring people back to the movie theaters. And bring back it did, actually, because you all remember Avatar, right? Because it's the highest grossing film of all times. And mostly people saw it in 3D. And nowadays we don't have only 3D. We have uh, IMAX, we have Dolby Atmos large format screens. We will have 4D, 5D. We already today heard about the virtual reality. We, of course, will have that in the movie theaters at some point. Still, all those technical solutions are great and cool, but still, they are only a short-term solutions. Maybe there is something else. We would like to propose another solution, and we think it's a long-term solution. Close your eyes. No, seriously, guys. Don't worry, we were not allowed to undress. Close your eyes. Imagine you're not in this splendid auditorium. You are in a basement in a small, dark-lit basement filled with moldy smell of sweat and blood. But you're not afraid of being sanctified by a crazy German scientist. No, you're actually excited. Excited to hear the phrase, the first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. The second rule of Fight Club, well, you get the point. Or imagine spending the night which is dark and full of terrors in the woods while watching Blair Witch Project. This is the kind of screening you will never forget. This is one screening to rule them all. By the way, you can open your eyes because I think somebody is already sleeping. This is types of screening. Sorry. <laughs> this is the types of screenings that are getting popular all over the world, including here, where we are trying to make them. We are trying to enhance the screenings by locations and props, cosplays and concerts discussions and presentations, all for one goal. For viewer after the screening to have this idea that he did had a shared experience. He did watch a film with a different emotional space. 
Because let's be honest here, guys, we are film fans. We love films. We love talking about films, obviously. We love discussing films. We love sharing films. We love arguing, arguing. about films. That's important. But most of all, we love to share our love of films with you. Because, because technology is not the enemy. Technology does not endanger the cinema. Technology does not endanger even the cinema experience. No, but what can endanger the cinema is the attitude that we, as moviegoers, are bringing with ourselves to the movie theater. And how we watch films and why, maybe even why, we watch films that can endanger the film-going experience. You would agree with me, that for example, if you are watching pictures of art on your mobile phone, this is completely not the same as going to the art gallery to see and feel and, and touch Up the real art. Don't touch the art. Okay, not touching, not touching. The films are the same on the big screen, on a small screen, on your perfectly fine-tuned uh, home theater system, even on the mobile phone, guys, mobile phone. It's the same film. But how you watch it, that makes it or breaks it for your experience. Another example is right here. Right now, we are in the Splendid Palace. And Splendid Palace is one of the oldest and most beautiful film theaters in Europe. It has seen all kinds of films, all kinds of screenings, all kinds of audiences, but still, here we are today. We are sitting here together and experiencing something for the first time ever. And that, my friends, is completely magical experience. So we would like you to join us. Come play with us, audience. Let's preserve the magic. If you have some experimental film events in your local town, or if there is a theater that is showing some obscure films, support them. Let's watch films together on the big screen. Let's cry together, let's laugh together, let's be captivated together. Respect the film, respect the audience, and most importantly, respect your own cinematic experience. Because frankly, my dear, nothing compares to watching your favorite films on the big screen with engaged audience. Thank you. And see you at the movies. <laughs>